It's the season of the gift, so what better time to defeat Pokemon Renegade Platinum with only gift Pokemon? And we're going to add another twist to that by adding hardcore Nuzlocke rules on top of it. And since people love shiny stuff in their Christmas tree, we're also going to add a rule on top of it that allows us to only use shiny Pokemon. For the people that don't know what Renegade Platinum is, it's a ROM hack made by Duriano that adds in a ton of quality of life improvements, a couple of really good story elements, boss battles that will make you grind your teeth because the difficulty has been ramped up immensely, but most importantly for us, the shiny odds have been changed to 1 in 512, which makes it a lot faster for us to find shinies. I'll be allowing myself to use every gift Pokemon available, which are all of these, with some very good options in there like Manaphy, Metagross, and a ton of starters. I'll be going more in depth about all of this throughout the entire video, but before we get into it, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Red Magic. They're a company that make gaming phones, so you don't have to get on your computer, it's all right there in your hand. They just came out with their newest smartphone, the Red Magic 9 Pro, and it feels like it was made by aliens from the future. It has the top-of-the-line Samsung GN550 megapixels camera, which I'm pretty sure is better than the camera I'm working with right now. On top of that, it has custom lights that all of you gamers love, and there is 16.8 million color options for you, which sounds insane, but it's pretty straightforward and easy to use. And as I said, this phone is made for gaming. It has a plug-in system to make everything super easy for you and customizable features so you can access different apps while you're in the game space. I myself used to play quite a bit of Pokemon Unite on the Switch, but ever since I got this phone, I've only played it on this because you can play it whenever you want and it's way smoother than on the Switch itself. On top of that, the phone is absolutely gorgeous and sits really comfortable in your hand as well. And you don't have to worry about burning your hands because your phone gets too hot because there's a built-in fan as well to cool it down. So if you want an amazing phone that also lets you game on the go, I highly recommend checking out Red Magic by either clicking the link in the description or the pinned comment down below to learn more about Red Magic. And with that, I want to thank them for sponsoring this video and jump right back into it. But now let's turn into Santa, fight off the Grinch, and try to save Christmas with our shiny gift Pokemon. We wake up one day on the North Pole and all of a sudden the Grinch starts running in and steals all of the presents. So we run after him and once we reach the end of the stairs, our wife stops us and gives us a pair of running shoes and a bicycle to follow him even faster. We arrive at his house shortly after and barge down the door, but it's already too late. He sent the presents to a remote location and if we're ever going to want to find them, we're going to have to keep on defeating him in Pokemon battles to get a new clue with every win. Just when he's about to escape my grasp once again, Rowan the Penguin and his assistant, the elf, come along. They've managed to find three of the gifts already and are willing to give one of them to me. To follow the spirit of Christmas and gift giving, I decided to go with the penguin, Piplop. While it might have the worst shiny of the entire trio, I feel like a water steel type is going to do us well throughout this run, as it will be able to resist a lot of attacks and even be immune to poison, which the Gringe will probably have plenty of. As you may expect from shiny gift hunting, this is just going to be a reset and repeat strategy. If your Piplup doesn't start shining in the battle, you throw it in the trash. But while I was resetting for this Piplup, the Grinch stole a Turtwig. So I had to keep resetting to try and get this tiny little turtle back, but unfortunately luck wasn't in my favor as I already went over odds on my very first hunt. It took me a whopping 1,268 resets to get this little guy. Considering I could do about 250 resets an hour, this ended up being a 5 hour journey, but I'm not disappointed at all because we were able able to take down the Turtwig with some bubbles and scare the Gringe away before he could steal that Chimchar too. Also, if you're a shiny hunter yourself, let me know what Pokemon you're looking forward to shiny hunting in 2024. After going home, we find out that our Piplup is mild, which means it's plus special attack, minus defense, not the best nature, Adamant would obviously be better here, but anything that's going to buff Empoleon's special attack even more, I will take. We go to Penguin Rowan's base where we can actually name our own Penguin, and I decide to name him Feet. No, not because of that reason, you pervs, but because of the movie Happy Feet. Rowan then tasks us to try and find all the presents again, which we happily oblige to. Elf Dawn gives us some balls and a catching tutorial that we're not going to use because we're literally not going to capture a single Pokemon in this run. And after extinguishing her Chimchar's flame, we head back home to our mom because that's the place where the Grinch hid our second present. Which turns out to be an Eevee, a super useful companion that can evolve into an abundance of Pokemon, and if you want to know what I'm 
going to evolve it into, you're just going to have to wait and see. I just hope you aren't guessing Vaporeon. How do we go about checking Eevee? Well, you pick up the gift, don't give it a nickname to save time, and then proceed to check your party, and instead of it being brown, it should show up as Snow White. Eevee came a little bit quicker than Feet, but not that much. It took me 829 encounters to get him, but these encounters were way faster than Piplup because you don't have to go through the entire sequence of talking to the professor and battling the Grinch. So two hours and a half later, and we have our beautiful snowy dog, or fox, or whatever this is. Our journey then leads us to Jubilife City, where Elf Dawn introduces us to her friend that works for the international police who's also going to try and help us out with saving Christmas. He gives us a tip that one of the Grinch's accomplices is in the Pokemon Center here, handing out these gifts if you manage to overcome her quiz and then defeat her in a battle. Our brain is so big that we do both of those things without any flaws, but the cool thing about these accomplices in the Pokemon Center is that they give you three starter Pokemon at once. This lady here gives you the Kanto starters and I was personally hoping for a Charmander because Charizard is just really cool and would look great in the thumbnail, but realistically you're only going to get one of these three because you only get one chance at them and you're going to have to be incredibly lucky to get two or even three out of the three shiny at once. Honestly, I was just praying to not get Squirtle here because we already have a better water type and Squirtle's moveset and bulk isn't really something we need. But remember what I just said, you have to be incredibly lucky to get either two or three out of the three shiny starters here. And we got so lucky that we just ended up with one. Bulbasaur. A great utility mod that has access to moves like Sleep, Powder, Growth, and Leech Seed, and Venusaur has some incredible bulk if you build it the right way. As for the resets, I only had to receive the starter 6 times and Bulbasaur already shown. As for the nature, he turns out to be a plus attack minus speed, probably one of the worst ones we could have gotten, but I guess Venusaur wasn't all that fast anyway. Oh, and for anybody wondering, Eevee was a bashful nature that's not going to hinder or help us at all, but I'll take it. We get a distress call from some students saying that the Grinch is terrorizing their school, so we yap them out of there, and we go check up on everybody to see if they're okay, and as a reward, one of the cowgirls here, don't know why cowgirls are in a school, decides to give us an egg, which can contain any baby Pokemon up until Generation 4. Personally, I was really hoping for either a Riolu or an Elekid, because they're just both really good, and Electric is just a typing that we can otherwise not get, so it would be great for coverage. Anything but Iglybuff here would have honestly been a win, even Hapini or Cleffa would be very nice because they turn into Chansey or Blissey, which are great bulk, and Clefable, who's now a fairy type in this game, so that would have been very nice too, but we ended up getting a Munchlax. I mean, I love Munchlax, I love Snorlax, they are great Pokemon, I will not complain at all, because we've just attained an amazing wall. The process of hatching these eggs was also really easy, because Rayano has basically made it so that when you receive an egg, you only have to do like 5 steps until it hatches. Personally, I had to hatch 244 eggs, which was not too bad to do, as it only took me about an hour, and Gluttony the Munchlax had a very fitting nature as it was a relaxed one, which is plus defense, minus speed, one of the best ones we could have gotten, as it's already really specially defensively bulky, and this will help with its regular defense. We finally move on to the next round where we get ambushed by the Grinch. He wasn't too happy that we threw him out of that school, and he's here to get revenge. So we throw out our Eevee, take down Starly with a couple of covets, and we also got a lucky crit with Covet on his second Pokemon Munchlax, which allowed us to also take it down in just two turns. The last Pokemon Turtwig was a little bit harder for me to take down and was getting a little bit scary because of the curses it was putting up, but we really didn't have anything to take this guy down yet, so I swapped in Bulbasaur, used Poison Powder for the chip damage, and then just kept on Razor Leafing until it went down. I also found a Silk Scarf on this route, which can buff either Munchlax or Eevee's normal type attacks. We made our way into the Orberg Mine, where we see one of the Gringe's henchmen, Rourke. He's the guy that normally makes the coal to give the naughty children, but they're hatching a plan to give everybody on the planet coal, which is something we can't allow. So we scare him out of here and he drops a moonstone, which we do use to evolve Eevee into Umbreon immediately, giving us a huge boost for the first gym, and Umbreon's all-around great bulk, access to recovery, and an incredible move pool is going to be a great addition to the team. But this isn't enough for us to take on Rourke yet, we have to take down 
on one of the Grinch's henchmen once again, and this time they're going to provide us with the Hoenn starters. I'm obviously banking on Mudkip here, but since we really need a fire type for the team, Torchic would also be really great, considering Blaziken also gets the fighting type later on. Trico would probably be the most useless one, but it's only as useless as Sceptile can really be. This one took a lot longer than Bulbasaur, considering it's three encounters at once, but on my 701st encounter, Torchic showed up. This quirky little chicken is absolutely going to carry us through the second gym, I can already tell. But in order to do that, we have to put it into the KFC frying basket, let it cook for long enough, and take it out so that it can become a combuskin. There's another person in this town that's willing to help us out, with potentially one of the best Pokemon in this run. It's not Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, it's Steven the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And he provides us with a robot from the future, Beldum. Do I really have to explain how Metagross is going to absolutely dominate teams? I mean, great typing, insane stats, and a move pool that will make your mouth fall open. As for the resets, this was by far the worst one yet, 1529, but they were pretty quick as it took me around 4 hours and a half to get this little guy. It's quite bashful, which is very fitting for it. We also evolve our Bulbasaur into Ivysaur and then enter Rourke's lair. I challenge him to a battle and tell him to never give any coal to any children again, but he doesn't comply and throws out his nose pass. So I throw out my own Ivysaur and sleep powder it because I don't want it to use Thunder Wave, Sandstorm, or Stealth Rock. I then use a couple of magical leaves to take out the big nose rock, while he also wastes a potion on it. I'm incredibly lucky that Sturdy doesn't work yet in Generation 4, so we can one-shot the next Pokemon Geodude too. Kranidos was incredibly scary as it was able to outspeed me, which I didn't expect, and I should have just gone for magical leaf here, but I decided to put it to sleep first and and then take it out with a magical leaf to turn after. Onyx came in and I knew I wasn't going to be able to outspeed, so I swap out into Primplup and he's able to bulldoze me and set up Stealth Rocks, but we once again one-shot with Water Pulse here. The rest of his gym also gets flooded, and with that, he's out of the coal manufacturing business. The Grinch was spying on me and saw all of this and even pushes me out of the way as he goes to his next destination to try and get some more manpower for his operation. He seems to have acquired an entire team of evildoers that are here to steal presents all over the world. They're even harassing Penguin Rowan and Elf Dawn, so we help them out and inform them about everything that's happening so far. They're already super proud of me, and it seems like the luck is also on our side because we end up finding an expert belt and DTM for Rock Tomb in an upcoming cave. Just outside of Floroma time, we end up running into the Jingle Thieves once again. That's the name of their group, apparently. So we shake some of their grunts around until they drop a key which allows us to enter their secret hideout. They're holding some elves hostage here, so we have to save them from their evil hands. And we do that with the help of our newly acquired evolution, Metang. Honestly, this has to be the best looking pseudo-legendary shiny. And if you think otherwise, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite shiny pseudo-legendary is, because I can't think of any that look better than Metang and Metagross. Anyway, it's time to stop Mars and her illegal actions. I let off with Metang to deal with her Zubat immediately. I also set up some Stealth Rocks. Those are really going to hurt her Yanma once that comes in, and I also set up a single iron defense before we take out the stupid bad with Zen Headbutt. See, I set up this iron defense for this next Pokemon Perugly, but it was able to put me to sleep with Hypnosis and still hit me super effectively with Fain Attack, so I had to get Matang out of there and bring in Combuskin to tank a Fain Attack, and then I get hit with a Facade, but that was a critical hit, so that left my Combuskin with only 7 HP. Luckily, that's enough for me to take out Perugly with a single double kick, but that was way too close for Combuskin. Comfort. I bring an Umbreon to deal with the incoming Bronzong by using Bite, and the last Pokemon, Yanma, gets destroyed by a Water Pulse from Primplup because of the Stealth Rock damage that it already took earlier. We call the cops, but before they can arrive, Mars has already left the scene, but at least the elves can go back to making some nice presents. Before we go to Eternal Forest, we head back to Floroma Town and defeat the last starter carrier. Once you defeat her, she gives you the Johto starters, and there's obviously one Pokemon here I want, and that's Cyndaquil. I love Totodile. I I don't like Chikorita, but Cyndaquil is going to be great because Typhlosion is fast, it has great special attack, and it gets access to Eruption if we can keep it alive long enough. And it felt like God was looking upon me at this moment and said, yes. 
you deserve a Cyndaquil. So that's exactly what I got. Only 115 resets were acquired, and our timid Cyndaquil is ours. Plus speed, minus attack is amazing, but I obviously would have loved a modest one, but now it's going to be able to outspeed a lot more. We set this thing on fire even more, and this turned it into a beautiful Kulava. Together with him and Cheryl, we set the entire forest on fire, and make a quick stop at the Hounted Mansion to talk to some very nice people that were not weird at all, and I also randomly knocked out a TV here. I've also been turned into a gardener as I've been trying to pick every berry that I see because they could be useful in many boss battles, but the most useful ones are mostly only Orin, Citrus, and then one of the status removing ones. We then reach Eterna City, and here we enter a building where we find a woman that normally researches coal, but here she found some very weird pieces that resemble Pokemon somehow. She can't really do anything with these, so she decides to hand them to me, giving us three of every single fossil available except for the old amber. We only get one of those. So if we ever need them, we can even pull up the power of the past to defeat the Grinch. I decide to go for a nice evening walk in the snow and end up at this very warm cabin. Inside there's a woman who says that she wants to remove all the snow and ruin Christmas by turning it all into beautiful plants and grass fields. Before we can even blurt out a word to tell her to stop, she already leaves and retreats to her garden, so we go there to try and take her on too, to save Christmas once more. We confront her and threaten all of her vegetables with frozen ice if she doesn't stop all of her antics, but she isn't having any of it and throws out her blossom. So I bring in Combuskin ready to torch everything, but she has me pinned down with a stun spore, is what she thought if I didn't equip a cherry berry for this occasion exactly, allowing me to take out Blossom with just two fire punches. Rose Raid comes in and I know this thing has extra sensory, so I go into Matang which takes minimal damage from it. I destroy it with Zen Headbutt, Cherim comes in and sets up the Sunny Day, but I'm also able to hit another Iron Head here, before bringing out Combuskin again, who can tank a Grass Knot and a Fiery Weather Ball to then kill it. I Scorch Grottle, burn Spaghetti, all while tanking a Shockwave with 11 HP remaining as she goes into her final Pokemon, the Mushroom Chicken. I bring in Ivysaur because Breloom really has nothing that can even hit me for neutral damage. I go for the Sleep Powder because you can actually put Grass types to sleep in this game, and I then poison it with a single Sludge, which I just realized I should have just gone for in the first place. As a trophy, we take one of our flowers with us, and then we run into Luker, who is going to raid this Jingle Thieves hideout together with us. This time, they've not only stolen gifts, but also random Pokemon from a bike shop owner. And if they start attacking little businesses, you know I have to jump in. Because without them, presents can be sold. But before taking on Juniper, we stopped by the name raider and named our Combuscan Turkey, because we have to put that in the oven. Matang is now known as Star to put on top of the Christmas tree. Ivysaur will now be known as the Mistletoe, and Umbreon will be the Christmas Balls. Time for Jupiter. She starts off with Golbat, so we once again lead with Matang. We once again set up a Stealth Rock and hit it with a Zen Headbutt, leaving it with only a sliver of HP and just when I'm about to take it out with another Zen Headbutt, she swaps out into Sableye, cancelling it out. I swap in Ball so we can play with it roughly, then she swaps in Golbat, who dies to the Stealth Rock damage, but then Skunk Tank comes out, who's going to stink up the place. I realized that my play roughs were barely doing any damage, so I brought in Munchlax, who got hit with a Poison Jab two times in a row, and Poison on top of that, so he was only able to hit one Body Slam before he also had to get out of there. As I brought in Matang, who's immune to the Poison Jab, I then knew this thing was going going to go for a dark type move, so I swapped in Combuskin. I then punched it with fire and kicked it with my feet. As it left behind a stinky cloud, it did go down and left my turkey with only 17 HP. Tangela then gets destroyed by Sludge and Jupiter is defeated. The Pokemon are released, except for one, Porygon. It's been left behind, waiting for a trainer to pick it up. So I guess this is a gift from Jupiter for defeating her. I will definitely take it, because Porygon can be very versatile. And its shiny is also quite amazing. So add in 2,305 encounters to go over odds four times before this stupid blocky duck would show up. But it does have the download ability, which is great if it ups its special attack, and it's a docile nature, so nothing really special there either. Now let's just 
hope this Porygon doesn't do the same thing he did in the anime. But believe it or not, this is not the last gift Pokemon we got in this city, as this shady blonde woman threw an egg in my lap and just ran away. This egg contains a Togepi, an amazing Pokemon once turned into Togekiss, and it's also going to be our only fairy type. But unfortunately, it might have an even worse shiny than Garchomp. That doesn't mean it's less valuable though, so let's start resetting until we get our breakfast. 82 eggs later, which is very respectable. I mean, we kind of deserve it after that Porygon one. And this slightly different color egg came out of another egg. I'm not gonna lie, I almost reset over this guy. I even had to double check to see if it even was shiny. But now the quiet egg salad is going to add some much needed coverage to the team. Plus special attack minus speed is not the best because Togekiss needs to outspeed a couple of major threats. And this is definitely not going to work in our favor. We then pull our bike out of our pocket, go through cycling road and ride into a cave. Where we accidentally hit a lost little girl that's just searching for her Christmas present. She was so shook that she even attacked me with her team. She might have the evolved form of our egg salad, but Matang can deal with it by just using Iron Head one time. Balls crunched her haunter, and Matang dealt with Porygon 2 and Kadabra with a little jump scare thrown in there as it was only left with 1 HP from a not very effective grass knot of all things. We helped Mira get out of the cave and find her prison again, and then on our search to find the Grinch again, we run into Dawn. She comes bearing some gifts once more, but in order for us to get them, she needs to measure our strength. She leads off with a pile of swan, and believe it or not, this thing has not got a ground type move. So I lead off with turkey and smash it into a million pieces with sky uppercut. We did survive a takedown, and low punny then comes in. I know I can't take many hits from this thing. I try to bring an egg salad, but it isn't bulky enough. So instead, I go into star. He, on the other hand, is able to tank a dizzy punch and a jump kick, counter back with a zen headbutt and a bullet punch, and the cursed rabbit is down. Monferno is easy. We swap into primplup to tank a flame wheel and a mac punch then scald it, while Mistletoe pollutes the heck out of the last Pokemon Clefable to win this battle. As reward, we get the Versus Seekers so that we can fight even more people, but that's against the spirit of Christmas, so I'll try to refrain from using it too much. Inside of Mount Coronet, we then run into another one of the Grinch's followers. He's kind of taking the leader position in Team Jingle Thieves, and is planning to eradicate Christmas once and for all so that it will never ever. Be a jolly time ever again, meaning that Mariah Carey is without a job. However, we do not fight him here, we instead head out of the cave and evolve our Ivysaur into Venusaur, Togepi into Togetic, and Munchlax into Snorlax. Our next opponent was going to be Aeron from the Elite Four, the Protectors of Christmas. And in order for me to win that matchup, I had to go and revive one of my fossils. The most overpowered one of them all, in fact, and that's the Flying Dragon Aerodactyl. A pink shiny that doesn't really suit its fierce exterior, but it does make him look more like Ridley. Mine showed up after 1,423 fossil revives, which might sound like a lot, but it's honestly really easy to reset for. Once you give the fossil, you just have to head outside, head back inside, save up, and take the fossil back. It did take me about 3 hours and 45 minutes until I got this guy, but with his serious nature, I knew he was going to be a very valuable team member. But we have no more time to waste, as we have to challenge Aeron and his creepy crawly bugs. Aerodactyl immediately shines as it one-shots his dust stalks with a rock slide. I bring an oven to tank a bullet punch from the incoming scissor and counter back with a lava plume to totally melt it down. I swap in Snorlax to take two cross poisons from the incoming Drapion and manage to get a crit with body slam to take the big scorpion down in just one hit. I then get incredibly lucky on these next few turns as I could have lost Aerodactyl. I swap it in against Venomoth and Sludge Bomb this Despite being not very effective, did about half of my health. I then click Rock Slide which can miss, but luckily connects and takes it out. I then also use it on the incoming Beautifly, thinking I would one-shot, but it has a Focus Sash, and honestly, it could have taken me out here if I hadn't flinched. So he uses one last heal, and we finish off this battle with a Wing Attack. We get our free x Scissor TMs, get viciously attacked by a Hapini, and put on our dancing shoes and I guess also put on Matang's dancing shoes because we're competing in a contest. I don't know, I never really used Pokemon contests in Platinum much. I only really played them in Generation 3, and now I understand why. Let's get out of here and do what we do best, 
battling and saving people. We evolve our Togekiss into Togekiss and grab our flashlight because Fantina is trying to replace Christmas with Halloween. And while that might be a fun holiday in its own right, it doesn't have enough cheer and presence. So let's get rid of her candy and kick her back to October where she belongs. It starts out flying type versus flying type, but I drop some rocks on it and make sure that balloon is popped. Miss Mikeus comes in and I knew this thing couldn't one-shot me and I wanted to know what move it was going to go for, so I dropped some rocks again and this time it crushed the magical hat as it turned out to be a crit, so spirit tomb and all of its souls hit the field. Togekiss is the best counter here, so I get Will-O-Wisp and burned, but a single Moonblast puts it back in its odd keystone. Gengar comes in and I swap in Snorlax, taking a Sludge Bomb pretty well, but I get very unlucky here, as I end up missing a Zen Headbutt, getting burned, and on top of that, Fantina just keeps on spamming heals. In the end, we had to get out of there and bring in Umbreon. I get Sludge Bomb and Will-O-Wisp, but I could crunch until Dusclops came in, and I could swap in Aerodactyl to take a Shadow Punch and a Pain Split, while also dropping its defense with my first crunch, so my second one can take it out. For the last Pokemon Banet, I didn't want to take any risks, so I swapped in Porygon, discharged it, and then took it out with a Signal Beam, as it disabled my Discharge on the second turn, and even burned me with a Will-O-Wisp. Fantina down, we take a little bit of Cloth with us from the Banet, as our sign that we managed to defeat her. We run into the Gringe again as we're trying to leave town, and this time he's got a Pumped Up team with the Pumped Up Kicks. And he might be our biggest enemy, but he's super easy to take down. Aerodactyl deals with Seravia by using Rock Slide, the Battle of the Snorlaxes turns out in my favor. Togekiss extrasensories his Heracross. The last Pokemon Grottle falls to Moonblast. A lady in distress then comes up to us and says that their beloved Pokemon Mansion is being raided by the Jingle Thieves. And this is an attack that the Gringe didn't authorize. So he's going to check it out, just like me. With the power of Santa's little helpers, we surround the Grunts there and chase them off until one of their commanders shows up. It turns out they're here to steal the greatest gift of them all, Manaphy. And he tries to force the owner of the mansion to battle me and take me out. That's when the Grinch shows up and he's not agreeing with any of this. So for once in his life, he's going to join Santa and help me to try and save Christmas. I basically just started off with Matang because the Bronzong couldn't touch me and proceeded to take down their Wigglytuff first. Then I just swapped in Snorlax and proceeded to take out the left side until Toxicroak came in. That's when I brought in Aerodactyl, took it out with a wing attack and then Octillery got pedal danced back to the army where it belongs. Saturn Saturn leaves with his tail between his legs and the director here entrusts me with the Manaphy egg. Which in turn is also our next shiny hunting target. Speaking of Manaphy, every time I see this Pokemon it either reminds me of the movie which was great or the moment you get it in Pokemon Ranger and have to transfer it to your Pokemon Platinum. However, now I can finally hunt it without all of those restrictions. And while it might have not been my first egg, second egg or the next 325 eggs, on my 326th however, treasure the Decided to shine. It's lax natured plus defense minus special defense could have been better, but with access to tail glow and an insane amount of coverage moves, this thing is going to run through everything like a bulldozer. I make a quick pit stop at Bebe, who hands me an upgrade so I can evolve my Blocky Duck into a round duck. On our way to Veilstone City, we definitely faced some very formidable trainers, but nothing our newly evolved Blaziken couldn't handle. Inside of the department store, however, we pick up DTM for Earthquake, which is going to help us out massively because Earthquake is just great if you pair it up with Aerodactyl in double battles, and it's definitely the strongest ground-type move we can get. Besides that, there isn't too much to do here except for craft a team that can take on Maylene, who's trying to smash. I should definitely not end that sentence there, but she's trying to smash up all the presents. So instead, I'm going to smash in the face of her Medicham with Treasures, Tail Glow boosted Dazzling Gleam, while tanking a Fake Out and High Jump Kick. I also ended up Gleaming Machamp, and I swapped into Mistletoe once Lucario hit the field. I tanked an Aura Sphere and a Flash Cannon before I hit my very first Sleep Powder. If this would have missed, we might have been in trouble, but so far everything is going to plan. While it's asleep, I kick it with my Fiery Feet. Until Galade comes in, that's when I swap in Aerodactyl, tank a Zen Headbutt, counter back with a Wing Attack, and win this battle with one last Attack of the Wings on Toxic Rogue. We steal Maylene's bandages, evolve Kalava with Typhlosion, who then burns two Grunts up with Lava Plumes so that Dawn can get her Christmas cookies back. We follow the routes to Astoria City, but Crasher Wake is nowhere to be seen. Apparently his plan is to stop winter forever and make it so that everybody can always swim like it's summer. We can't let that happen, so we get some help from Move Tutors to buff up our team and find him somewhere standing in the rain. As he says, if you want to stop me from creating a never-ending summer, come see me at my swimming pool. But just when 
I'm about to enter, the Grinch shows up in his bathing suit and tells me I want to go for a swim first. But I don't feel like criminals deserve to swim, so I attack him. I start off with Venusaur. I don't know why, because his starter is a Staraptor. But I quickly swap into Aerodactyl and Rock Slide it. I swap into Mistletoe in the incoming Azumarill and tank two Aqua Tails while putting it to sleep and then killing it with a Sludge Bomb. Once again, I should have just gone for Sludge Bomb. Sleep Powder is just killing me at this point. Treasure takes a Thunder Fang from Arcanine pretty well and counters back with a Bubble Beam to take it out. Excellent Moon Blast the Land Turtle with a critical hit and forces out Snorlax. So I bring in Blaziken, I get Body Slammed which does exactly half. I click Sky Uppercut thinking that it would kill, but it survived and it goes for another Body Slam. I thought Blaziken was dead here, that my Calyx had failed me, but turkeys have a very good instinct for surviving. I think because he lived with 7 HP as Heracross came in. I bring in Star, tank a Bullet Seed and a Mega Horn with 29 HP, hit a Zen Headbutt and a Bullet Punch, and send the Gringe in a swimsuit packing. Before we head into the Pool of Death, however, we need a seawater plant to join our team, so I head back to the Fossil Excavation Center and revive some Lilips. I actually really like the green and pink shinies they have, and I remember when I was playing Sapphire as a kid, I managed to get a Cradylip to level 100, and it was just my strongest Pokemon ever, so I kind of have a connection to this guy. After only 585 fossil revivals, however, this docile Lilip showed its face, or I guess its eyes, so I immediately evolved it into Cradily right after. Speaking of evolving, I also grabbed Empoleon, because we need a resistance for all of those water-type moves Crasher Wake will throw at me. Since this battle starts off with permanent rain up, I throw out Mistletoe and use Sunny Day to immediately cancel that out. Then I put the Quagsire to sleep and take it out with a single Petal Dance. Even his Grass Weakening Berry couldn't save him from a Dancing Toad. Because Petal Blast was still going, I was also able to hit one on the Gyarados, but once it ran out, I swapped out into Porygon and took it out with Discharge. Polyrath came in and I thought it was going to go for a Fighting type move, so I went into Togekiss, but instead it put me to sleep. Not the best scenario. Instead I bring in Treasure, who dazzles it, but Ludicolo is the perfect counter for me. So I bring in Balls, who can tank an Energy Ball and two Hydro Pumps, while I also Toxic the Ludicolo. With 26 HP remaining, I bring in Mistletoe, who tanks the Hydro Pump, not as well as I thought it would. So I get him out of there, bring in Treasure once more, and now the Toxic damage has racked up enough so that I can take it out with Dazzling Gleam. Charpedo comes in, I use Acid Armor to tank a Crunch, and counter back with two more Gleams of Dazzling to finish it off. The last Pokemon is a Float Soul, I get my little Sea Guardian out of there, bring in my Sea Plant, Giga Drain once, and win against Crasher Wake. No more Endless Summers as I steal his swimming trunks and run outside. That's when the Jingle Thieves bomb the stables of all the reindeer, leaving hundreds of them injured, so we go after the culprit and take him down. The mysterious lady shows up again and hands me a secret potion this time, and then just leaves without saying a word. So we use it on the Psyduck who gritty away. Then by far the best feature of Renegade Platinum, the fog is removed. No more missing my moves a million times in a row. Instead, I'm going to land them all in this upcoming dawn battle. Aerodactyl stepped with the right leg out of bed this morning, as he eats up Alakazam and Jolteon for breakfast before Mama Swine comes in, hitting my incoming Manaphy with a rock slide and an earthquake before Bubble Beam finishes off the brown giant. Star, like always, is the perfect counter for Clefable, Iron Heading it twice while tanking Moonblasts. This time she has an Infernape though, that's way more scary. I was expecting a fire type move here, so I swap in Aerodactyl, but it went for close combat, doing more than half of my HP. However, I know I'm going to outspeed and with a defense drop, my Earthquake can now one-shot. The last Pokemon is a low Lopunny who misses a jump kick as I fly up in the sky, which makes her crash into the ground, lose a ton of HP, which means that my fly can finish it off, and this reassures Elf Dawn that we are indeed the man for the job. Then my sight all of a sudden went blurry, so I visited a shop in Celestic Town and this guy gave me wise glasses and choice specs. Choice picks are going to be insanely useful once my Typhlosion learns Eruption, but I have many special attackers that can easily benefit from this as well. I evolve my Metang into Metagross before going into the ruins, where we have to defeat the leader of the Jingle Thieves, Cyrus. He's here to preach his hate for Christmas once again, but we're not having any of it as I send out my Typhlosion against this Crobat. And I'm not gonna lie, I just burned through his entire team with Choice Picks Flamethrower. Nothing could survive a single hit, and that's him out of here. I guess he's going to need some lotion for all of those burns later. Luckily, we can cool ourselves off with Surf, which we just 
just got from this old lady. And with it, we don't have to head to Canalave City. No, we have to head to the Paul Park first. A factory that creates snow globes for the Christmas holidays. But arriving there, we see that the Grinch has already stolen a few of them. But he flees at the sight of us. And instead, we go and talk to the people to see if they've seen anything. Professor Oak was too busy saying Pokemon snap quotes. You were close. And these two were no help at all either. So I had to destroy them in a Pokemon battle. This is basically how it went. Aerodactyl flew the Gallade. I sent in Manaphy, set up tail glows on Empoleon until I could one-shot the rest of her team with Surfs. Easy W for me. As a reward, we get some tea to warm us up in this cold climate. And as I went outside, I found myself a shiny Christmas tree. How cool is that? Even better for the video. But it's not a gift Pokemon, so it'll just be rotting in my box. We head to Canalave City and run into the Grinch who's been stealing books from the local library. Good thing that I can't read, and instead, I'm just going to use my fists. Or, I guess my Pokemon's fists. As I start off with Aerodactyl and Stone Edge his Star Raptor off this bridge. My Metagross comes in and Thunder Punches the incoming Azumarill, and Manaphy is the perfect counter for his Arcanine after this, as I tank a Flare Blitz and a close combat, counter back with that Surf, and then make a mistake by going into Aerodactyl on Torterra. As I take a Wood Hammer, and if this would have critted, Aerodactyl would have been dead. But since my Fly now has a 100% accuracy, it connects, takes out this and the incoming Heracross, and the last Pokemon Snorlax gets super powered by Turkey. After this, we take back the books to the library and only have to pay a little late fee here. We then head over to Iron Island with a boat where another adventurer awaits us. His name is Riley, and he's also known as the Aura Guardian. He's the protector of this island and one of the strongest trainers around, and he's willing to test my strength. So let's see if we can beat him up. This is how it goes. Superpower on Absol. Stone Edge on Silomance. Blaze Kick on Metagross. Blaze Kick on Lucario, but I'm Choice Bandit, so once Ursaring comes in, we swap out into Porygon 2, then into Metagross to tank a close combat and counter back with a Hammer Arm to take it down, because that Flame Orb is going to activate its guts, and that's going to make it hit way harder. Slacking in his last team member, so I bring in Umbreon and take a Hammer Arm with about half of my HP remaining. Then I use Toxic on the turn that he's loafing around, I then heal up with Moonlight, and once it loafs around again, I swap into Blaziken to kill it with a superpower straight after. After the battle, he tells me that he's heard word of the Jingle Thieves being somewhere on the island, so we have to go and exterminate them. We team up and destroy them without a single casualty and chase them off the island. In regular Platinum, Riley will give you a Riolu Egg here, which also counts as a gift Pokemon, but here it's been replaced by the Strength HM, which is very sad because I would have loved a Lucario on the team. Because that would have been great for our next opponent, Byron, who instead of his son Rourke is not trying to bury the world in coal, he wants to collect the entire world's steel and iron supply, so that no more presents can be made. And to release it back into the world out of his shackles, we are going to have to defeat him. Typhlosion's Flamethrower melt Bronzong and Steel Eggs, but Agron has a Focus Sash, so I have to get the oven out of here because he has to stop cooking. Instead, I bring in Mistletoe to tank a Head Smash, put the Agron to sleep, and hit it with two Petal Dances, while also healing up with Synthesis in the process. Bastion comes in, so I sleep out her again, bring in Snorlax, use Earthquake, take it down, and then Typhlosion burns up the last two with Flamethrowers, and after stealing Byron's Shovel, we get out of there and go to the library to have a meeting. Penguin Rowan and Elf Dog have managed to capture the Grinch, but then an earthquake happens, and in all the ruckus, he manages to escape. But we don't have any time to follow him, because they have ordered an attack on the lakes, so let's hope we can get there before they manage to capture the Guardians. Well, we didn't really get there in time, but the good thing is that I basically just swept through both of the admin's teams without even breaking a single drop of sweat. However, we have to go to Snowpoint City next, which is our natural habitat, and you might as well call this the North Pole at this point. We almost freeze to death in this harsh, snowy route, but after reaching Snowpoint City, it doesn't really get any better as earthquakes are terrorizing the place. Some of the villagers tell me that Regigigas has awoken once again and that two gym leaders are trying to put him back to sleep. So we want to try and help them, but we get stopped by two ace trainers who demand that we first defeat them before we save the world. So, I start off with Metagross and Manaphy, set up a Tail Glow and take out their Blissey with Iron Head. Freligator comes in, who is now part Dark type, so I Dazzling Gleam to take both of them out and also swap out my Metagross for Snorlax. Tyranitar and Meganium come in. I use Dazzling Gleam and Body Slam to take out the Meganium, but I got super lucky because the Petal Dance that it used was targeted on my Snorlax. If Manaphy would have been hit, there was a 90% chance that it would have died. Tyranitar down the following turn, I bring in Umbreon, she brings in Typhlosion. 
I couldn't just spam serve because that hits my own teammate too. And this Typhlosion was really faking me out with protect. So I had to keep on swapping out because my serves were hitting my teammates and I was doing too much damage to them. So ultimately, I just took them down with Dazzling Gleam and Brave Bird. We knock out Regigigas with the one through Slaparoo. And then it was normally time to take on Candace, one of the only gym leaders that's actually on our side. As she loves Christmas, but my footage for this fight sadly enough corrupted. So here is a visualization of how the fight went. But now we can warm ourselves up by leaving this place and heading back to Prestoria City for our next shiny hunt. This time we're going for a Lapras. I've been holding off getting this thing because it's not really needed. I'm just getting this to get some extra insurance on the team and because we don't really have an ice type yet. I still can't really believe what happened here, but Lapras showed up on my literal second reset. It's rash nature plus special attack minus special defense isn't great because this is meant to be a bulky maw, not really a special attacker, but it's way better than minus special defense plus attack, so I'll take it and ride on the back of it to go and watch one of the biggest speeches of all time. So let's listen carefully. I can't believe this man just said that. It's time to whoop his ass. This time I'm not sweeping with Typhlosion. First, I take out Crobat with Stone Edge from Aerodactyl. Then I Earthquake his Magnezone. Then I bring in Typhlosion and Flamethrower Weavile. And his next Pokemon, Hunchcrow, gets turned into a fried chicken. Hondoom is no problem either, as I superpower him with Turkey. And even though Cyrus hates Christmas, he still decides to give me a Master Ball as a gift, meaning that there must be some good in his heart. He tells me to go and free the Lake Guardians, because he's going to summon something that could end the entire world as we know it. And only they could help me save it. So we go to the basement and talk to Saturn who's only willing to let them go if we defeat him in another battle. And well, this is kind of how it went. Flamethrower, Scald, 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 Scald. Iron Head, Flamethrower, Flamethrower. Can you believe that this guy was like 10 times as hard as Cyrus? Well, I can't either, but it's time to set them free, change around our movesets one last time before saving the world, and climb to the top of the tallest peak. However, on the top of this peak, there are multiple threats for us to face. First, Mars and Jupiter are here to protect their boss while he summons this insane monster. But we're in luck today because the Grinch has decided that all of his past actions were not going to fly anymore. He's going to join the fight in helping out me and to save Christmas. So in this double battle, he's going to be our companion. But my Typhlosion has now learned Eruption, which means it's basically over for these two. Like a volcano, it destroys everything in its path, taking down every single one of their Pokemon until I run out of Eruptions and I'm forced to swap out on the Kangaskhan and Sableye. While I'm swapping out in a different Pokemon, his Staraptor is able to take out this Kangaskhan and Sableye, the last Pokemon Skunk Tank, gets destroyed by my Metagross. But the Grinch isn't going to stick around, he's a little bit too scared of this thing that Cyrus is going to summon, but he has one last gesture for me and that's a full heal for my team. But it's already too late as Cyrus spawns in the Pokemon of time and space to summon Giratina, who together create a world where Christmas has never existed and will never exist. The mysterious blonde girl shows up just at the wrong moment and tells me to jump into this portal after Cyrus so that we can maybe still close this world before it takes over ours. But we quickly find out that this world is turned upside down, literally. Along the way, we get some help of the three guardians and eventually we do manage to reach Cyrus once again. He destroys the blonde lady with just one attack of his Dialga and Palkia and then he comes after me. But we're prepared for these two gods. I lead off with Lapras and Venusaur to bait out Aurosphere. Then I swap out Lapras for Togekiss who can easily take two hits if they didn't use Spatial Rend on my Venusaur but I'm still able to put the Dialga to sleep. With my right slot, I keep swapping out in between Lapras and then Metagross, while my Togekiss is able to take out the Palkia and Dialga stays asleep. Very risky because if Dialga wakes up, Togekiss is dead to a Flash Cannon, but that's something I absolutely wanted to sacrifice. I go for another Moonblast on Dialga while I swap out Metagross for Typhlosion so that I could finish it off with Eruption, but Togekiss gets a critical hit with Moonblast, killing Dialga in just one hit and getting through this fight deathless. But Cyrus isn't going to give up that easily, we still have to beat his regular team too. He throws out his Crobat and I send out Lapras. As I'm trying to kill it with an Ice Beam, he swaps out into Magnezone, however, so I go into Typhlosion to kill it with an Eruption. Gyarados comes out next and this isn't the best matchup for me, so I go into Metagross who can take two Aqua Tails, counter back with a Thunder Punch to electrocute that big Sea Snake. This forces out Houndoom, so I go into my Lapras who can take a Dark Pulse and a Flamethrower and then counter back with Surf to wash away this Hound of Hell. Hunchcrow comes out, so I go into 
Aerodactyl, knowing that he can at least take a hit, but a Brave Bird that's not very effective, by the way, does this much damage. Because of the recoil, however, I know that I can kill with a fly, because I don't want to risk my Stone Edge missing. I bring in Typhlosion one more time to take out the last two Pokemon, Weavile and Crobat, with Flamethrowers, and with that, Cyrus is defeated. However, he does not see the error of his ways like the Grinch did, and instead of joining us again in our Christmassy world, he's going to stay here, where he'll be the happiest. However, to take down this portal once and for all, we still have to defeat one more Pokemon, and that's Giratina. So with an Ice Beam from Lapras, and a Moon Blast from Togekiss, who almost died to a Shadow Force, by the way, the God of the Underworld, and the biggest threat to Christmas, is defeated. We get teleported back to the send-off spring, where Cynthia finally tells me her name, and explains to us that she was the protector of Christmas last year. And if we want to take that title from her, we're going to have to defeat the Elite Four, and take our final gym badge. So we head over to Sunny Shore, the city where Christmas never lives because it's too warm there. And we find Volkner, the maker of all the Christmas lights. But he's on the verge of retiring if he doesn't get a good challenge soon. And that would be a catastrophe. So we have to puzzle our way through his booby trap gym and show him the real spirit of Christmas again. For this occasion, I gave my Metagross Earthquake, who can deal with his first Pokemon Jolteon by going for it two times in a row while taking a Shadow Ball. He brings in his oven where the turkey's supposed to go in, but I send out Aerodactyl instead and take it out with a Stone Edge while taking a Shadow Ball on the swap in. Raichu gets one shot too, and I can easily swap in Venusaur on the road on Wash's Hydro Pump and counter back with my own Leaf Storm to force out Luxray. Luxray cannot stand up to the fat of my Snorlax, so we Earthquake it once more, and the last Pokemon is Electivire. I knew a fighting type move was coming my way, so I swap out into Venusaur so that it's forced to go for Ice Punch the turn after, then I can swap in Typhlosion and kill it with one last eruption. As our reward, we get our very own string of Christmas lights. This means that we can head to Victory Road now, evolve our Porygon 2 into Porygon Z, make our way through this unforgiven cave with this lady that decided to help me out, until we eventually reach Dawn, who's reading a stone tablet that explained the entire prophecy of what happened today. We were supposed to be the hero that saved everyone all along, and so she wants to know how strong we've really become. And just like always, I destroy her. Eruption on Alakazam and Mamoswine. Then I swap into Manaphy on the Infernape and surf it. Jolteon has nothing on my Venusaur, so I sludge bomb it twice while being paralyzed. This means I'm forced to swap out into Metagross once Lopunny hits the field. I start spamming Zen Headbutts and tank two high jump kicks and a mega kick in the process. Until this bunny is no longer alive, the final Pokemon is Clefable, and with an Iron Head, we finish off the L. She wishes me good luck in my final few fights, because it's time for us to move on to the Elite Four. But just before we decide to enter, we get a tap on our shoulders, and it's the Grinch. He apologizes for everything that he's done, and he realizes that the joy of Christmas is something that you must enjoy and not ruin. He tells me that all the presents have been hidden in the Hall of Fame room, and if we want to get them, we have to defeat him and the strongest trainers one last time. Typhlosion starts off guns blazing once again, Staraptor is down to just a single eruption, and Azumarill swaps in, but my plant toad is ready with one sludge bomb, Arcanine is forced out. I swap into Aerodactyl while taking a Flare Blitz, and because of that recoil, Earthquake can now kill. I can also one-shot the incoming Heracross with a fly, and Turkey, who has not been used in the last 70 battles, can take out a Snorlax with superpower, and the final thing that he sends out is the Torterra he stole at the beginning of the game. Knowing an Earthquake is coming my way, I have to cancel it down by going into Aerodactyl once more. I use my fly and end off this fight. We say our goodbyes to the Grinch and thank him for his help. Then go to the Remove Reminder and move the leader to do our last little bit of team building and proceed to go into Aaron's room. And I don't think an Elite Four member battle is going to get any easier. Eruption for the first four Pokemon with Oven, then Aerodactyl finishes off the last two with Flies. We're not even breaking a sweat in this one, on the Bertha. Hippo Down leads off and sets up the Sandstorm, so I'm going for Venusaur and just go for one single Leaf Storm to force out the Glide score here. I bring in Manaphy to easily tank a hit because Manaphy is surprisingly bulky and counter back with the Surf. I know I should have learned it Ice Beam to deal with this next Pokemon Torterra, but it was no problem because we swap into Typhlosion on the Whoop Hammer and just use a Flamethrower. For Sudowoodo, I should have actually swapped into Manaphy, but I went into Metagross instead, go for the Iron Head, get a Flinch, and then go for the Bullet Punch to finish it off. For Camerupt, I have Manaphy once more, surfing twice because of the Focus Sash and tanking an Overheat and an Earth Power, the last Pokemon 
Rhyperior also gets washed away, and just like that, Bertha is defeated. On to Flint, the man that cooks all your turkeys, cause he's the manufacturer of ovens. And as it turns out, the only thing you need to beat an oven manufacturer is some earthquakes. I mean, literally, every single one of his Pokemon was one-shot by Aerodactyl, the only one that even got a hit in was Houndoom with a Solar Beam because he outsped me. I thought it couldn't get any easier after Aaron, but this was kind of embarrassing for Flint. He even had nothing to say after this fight, and I'm not blaming him to be honest. On to Lucian and his Alakazam, who immediately puts in work by getting my treasure down to red HP. By using Psychic two times in a row, I did the same with Shadow Balls and managed to kill it, but I couldn't just set up a Tail Glow and go for one Shadow Ball because it had a Focus Sash. His Palm Tree couldn't handle the heat, but his Sarmi could, however. Luckily, the best solution for this was swapping into a Grass Toad that could avoid a Hydro Pump and counter back with a Leaf Storm while tanking a Psychic. His last three Pokemon were Metagross, Gardevoir, and Gallade, who could all not withstand a single Choice Banded Blaze Kick from Blaziken. Now there was only one more obstacle facing us, and that was the last protector, Cynthia. She has no idea that the prisons are hiding in the Hall of Fame room because nobody has been in there in over a year. And I don't just want to barge in there and tell her what's happening, I want to actually win this fight and really earn this title, so let's get right into it. She leads off with her Milotic, which is probably one of the worst leads I could have gotten. But I have Metagross in the front here and I'm able to hit two Zen Headbutts while tanking two Skulls, and when I'm about to take out the Milotic, she swaps out into Spiritomb to negate my attack. Swap into Manaphy though and set up a Tail Glow, then kill this Spiritomb with Dazzling Gleam so that all of its souls go throughout the room and never to be seen again. The next Pokemon is an Ampharos who is now Electric Dragon, so he Ice Beam that into Oblivion. Because of my boosted stats, I can also take down the next Pokemon Garchomp, who does have a berry to weaken Ice-type moves, but it's not enough anymore at this point. Staraptor comes out, and I'm thinking that I can outspeed it here, but I sadly enough don't, and it kills me with a Brave Bird, having my very first death of the run in the last battle. But it was a long time coming, we definitely deserve this one, for all those misplays we've already done in the past. I send out my Aerodactyl, finish off Staraptor with a Stone Edge while tanking a Brave Bird yet again, the weak Milody comes out once more, so we Brave Bird that twice too, while the recoil damage almost takes me out and I'm not taking a risk with Lucario surviving an earthquake. Instead, I swap into Venusaur, click Sleep Powder, then go into Typhlosion, our MVP, and give Cynthia a well-deserved send-off with one final eruption. We, Santa, have just become the real protector of Christmas, and as I enter the Hall of Fame room with Penguin Rowan, we finally get all of our presents back, which means we can make everybody happy across the world. And with this gift-giving season, I obviously want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for helping me out throughout the years, and if you want to join them, you can click the links in the description. It is always appreciated, but not needed. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you all next time.